Today, we're going to turn these 3D printed parts into a modular under the shirt arc reactor. I started with choosing the lights. I decided on 12 volt LED lights so that they can be powered by a 9 volt battery in your pocket. For the outer ring light, I found these halo headlamp LEDs on Amazon. I went with the 90 millimeter version because that seemed about what size an arc reactor should be. I pried off the plastic diffuser that came with it. It's nice, but it's just going to add unnecessary bulk that we don't need. I gave the light a quick test and wow, you can already see that it's more than bright enough. For the center light, I found these smaller circular LED array bulbs. These are also really nice and bright. Knowing the light measurements, I can now start to evolve a design for the light holder in 3D. I used this photo of the first arc reactor as a reference. I traced my own symmetrical vectors on top of it using Adobe Illustrator. For a more detailed explanation on how to trace photos into vectors, check out my last video shown here. Once I had the 2D arc reactor outlines, I then recreated the LEDs based on their dimensions and placed them inside of the arc reactor graphic. Now I have everything I need to design the light housing around these vector objects. Next, I imported the design into Fusion 360 to start building the 3D model. I extruded the main LED housing to about one centimeter so that it doesn't stick too far off your chest. Then I cut out little pockets where the LEDs will be stuck in. I tried to leave as much thickness as possible at the base of the pockets so that the light would be better diffused by the 3D printed part. These little tabs with holes on the left and right sides are there so we can attach elastic straps later on. As I was designing this model, I thought it would be a cool idea to make the faceplate designs interchangeable. The final features I added were these four little cavities on the outside of the circle. These holes will act as friction fit detents to hold the faceplates in place without the need for screws or glue. Now that the model is complete, it's time to export our STL file for printing. If you're using Fusion 360, instead of rendering your model in the cloud and waiting 10 minutes, just right click on the top of the hierarchy and click Save as STL. This will export your file using local resources and only take a few seconds. Next, I extruded the first faceplate design and included four bumps on the inside to match up with the detent holes. I'll be providing all of these files totally for free if you follow the links in the description. You can always show your support for the channel by giving us a quick like and subscribe. Now, before we move on to the printing, I quickly whipped up these buckle and snap connectors with one inch slots that we'll later use to build our simple wearable harness. Enough designing already, let's prepare these files for printing. Lately, I've been using Cura a lot to prepare my G-code. I originally thought 100% infill would give the best light diffusion effect, but that's not the case at all. After some experimenting, I found that 50% cubic infill had the best light diffusion properties because of all these little triangular pyramids that diffract and scatter the light. I loaded up the printer with some transparent PLA filament. White filament would probably also work well to help the light pass through. If you end up trying it, let me know how it goes in the comments. Now we're ready for printing.
notice that I use black filament for the faceplate to block the light. I think blue filament would work well too, and it might even help give it a nice bluish glow. You could also always just paint over the transparent filament to make it opaque. Now let's move on to the assembly. I test fitted the faceplate and it fits like a glove. There's just enough friction to hold it on, but it's not too tight either. I placed the lights inside the holder and then measured a small piece of wire to connect the center light to the ring light. To make the light a little bit more modular, I soldered the main wires to this male pigtail connector. I didn't have a proper 9 volt battery connector, so I just soldered the female pigtail connector directly to the battery. If you decide to do it this way too, be careful not to heat up the top of the battery too much. The top part is made of plastic and too much heat will destroy the battery. Next, to make sure your glue gun is nice and hot, and then just apply a minimal amount of hot glue all around the lights, and then press it firmly into the light holder. To minimize any chances of a shock or a short circuit, I used a little more glue to conceal any exposed wires and leads. Now all we need to do is put together the wearable harness. You might have noticed that the harness tab sticks straight out on the sides and might poke through under a shirt. I'm fixing this by heating up the tabs with a heat gun and then carefully bending them to conform to the shape of my chest. Get out your roll of 1 inch elastic straps. And just as an example to demonstrate, we're going to snip lengths of the elastic and then thread them through the 3D printed parts like this. Grab the 3D printed connectors and buckle. We're going to start the harness assembly with the two rear connectors. Cut a piece of elastic to about 10 inches long and then thread it through both connectors. We'll call this assembly the back strap. Next, wrap the elastic around one side of your body to estimate the length for the side straps. Cut a new strap in that length and then cut a duplicate strap of the same length for the other side of your body. Now thread the side straps into the vertical slots on both sides of the back strap. Get out your light assembly, and now thread the loose ends of the side straps into the vertical slots on the light holder's side tabs. Do the exact same thing for the shoulder straps. Estimate the length, and then cut two of those lengths for both shoulder straps. Thread the shoulder straps into the horizontal slots on the back strap. And then thread the opposite loose ends of the shoulder straps into the horizontal slots on the light holder. And there it is, our harness is basically assembled. We just need to tighten the fit and secure the straps. For tightening the fit, it might help to have someone with you to help you put on the harness and pull the straps tight. Once you have the harness on, pull all of the straps so the fit is nice and snug. You can save the positions by sticking pins into the straps or marking the strap positions with a pencil. 
carefully take off the harness and make sure all of the straps are in the correct place. Take a needle and thread and start closing up all of the open loops where the straps are threaded through the plastic parts. You don't need to sew too much, just enough to keep the straps in place. This is probably the longest step, so maybe throw on a movie while you do it. Now that everything is secured, we're going to make a quick release to make the harness easier to put on and take off. Put on the harness and find a spot on the side strap to the right side of your chest, ideally under your armpit so the buckle doesn't show through your shirt. Use a pencil to mark the spot where the buckle should be. Take off the harness and then find the buckle placement. Mark the center of where the buckle will connect and cut a line on that mark. Thread the loose ends of the side strap into their corresponding buckle connectors. Once they're threaded through, sew those buckle loops shut. Now that our harness is personally fitted, snip off any excess elastic from the connection points. To keep the elastic ends from fraying and unraveling, use a lighter to quickly singe all of the freshly cut elastic. Since it's made from rubber and polyester, this will melt it a bit and fuse it all together. And that's it, the wearable arc reactor harness is done. Before we put it on, I quickly designed four more interchangeable faceplates that span over most of the Iron Man movies. To get my new 3D models, all I had to do was swap the surface sketch on the original 3D faceplate. I got lucky and the 3D models turned out to be just the right size that I could print all four at the same time. Putting on the harness is super easy. Stick your left arm through the left shoulder loop, and then stick your head through the shoulder straps. Snap the buckle in place and you're good to go. I attached a modular inline LED switch and powered it up. Let's start with my favorite faceplate design, the original Mark I arc reactor. Since this arc reactor is meant to be worn under a shirt, find your favorite shirt to put on over top. So I really like how this turned out. You can really see the sharp design details pop through the shirt fabric. There's a little bit of light bleeding out around the edges, but you could easily fix that by painting over the outer casing of the light holder with some black paint. What's your favorite arc reactor design? Let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas on how to improve this build, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Just a reminder that you can download all the files totally for free from a link in the description. Help us by showing your support for the channel by dropping a quick like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the major Iron Man project coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.